Welcome back to the channel, guys. We're on the cedar deck today. Got our post set. Been dealing with some bad weather. Perfect day today. Hope to get a lot done. Our next set is we have two more posts to set, and then we got to get an LVO in this side to clear span 16 feet. It's going to open things up. We're going to have two by eight rafters. So we're setting our posts, our six by sixes. What we're doing beforehand is using a planer to take off it's basically the thickness of the hardware. Mm -hmm. uh, Hillman? Hillman. Hillman anchors. And for these anchor plates, aren't those half? Half inch bolts, just so the head's clear, or you could use a washer. Right there. Kind of like a tiger. You got your 90 degree. That's why right angles come in handy. Old Milwaukee. Hold this here. I'll go grab that level. That should. That's the code. Hmm. That's the code. Money. Money? Yeah. So Alex is putting in the Simpson um, structural screws. They're number nine by two and a half. These post bases, we fill every slot. So what we've been doing too is essentially blocking parallel with our, be our post and then filling in. That way you can secure it and really block it in. and. Somewhere for your uh, deck boards to ride. Good morning, guys. How good are morning. you? Can we wait up for dinner? Jimmy John's, Taco John's. I'm good. I'm buying. Thank you, though. You're going to Jimmy John's? I'll go wherever you want me to, Alex. All right, just a number one. Couple of them. There he is. He extra, extra meat on that for him. Some protein. <laughs> number one is extra meat. No, just one. He don't think you're serious. Homeowner's buying lunch today. He's a cool guy. Troy's a good dude. Mm -hmm. Just had shoulder surgery. It's a mouthful, ain't it? The mouthful, everything's shoulder surgery, shoulder surgery. Can't even talk. Great people. Yeah. Can't can't be working for people like this. You know. It's another thing too. If you guys are, is this still recording? Yeah. But I can edit whatever out. Yeah. If you guys are working for. Um, people and they're asking you questions about why you're doing this why you're doing that just explain it to them be honest with them tell them if they ask you to do something you don't quite understand or you don't think it's right either look into it and get back to them or just do as they ask you know if it's an extra step that you might have overlooked just apologize and tell them that you uh, overlooked it and you'll take care of it you're gonna get a lot farther yeah I think Along that same vein, I was listening to a podcast the other day, and for all, like all the guys in the trades listening to this, yeah, we build stuff for people, but ultimately, just like any job, our job is relationships, relationship building, and just serving other people. So the better you are, the higher service you provide, the more you will be compensated, both in not only monetary, but also, you know, it kind of obviously makes you feel good, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Your, your sense of pride. That and like you take good care of people. Word of mouth is the best form of advertisement. So that extends farther than anything you could pay to do. Mm -hmm. And you know, these people have people come over or your customers have people come over. Well, I think people, when you walk by a job site, it's not too hard to tell if the carpenters there take pride in their work, the job site's orderly. It's cleaned up every night. There's not material laying everywhere. Definitely you know. no trash. Don't leave your trash boy. Yeah. 
you know take pride in what you do you're gonna you're so you know a lot of people their home's their biggest investment obviously they take great pride in it so you know do your part to show that you're grateful to work on their house and just go above and beyond you never you know, know work that. on it like it's your house yep exactly that's what that's my standard something my dad taught me years ago if you wouldn't do it in your own house don't do it in somebody else's so do it exactly as if it's your own. Don't cut corners that you wouldn't cut corners in your own house. You can see that two by six off the house. That is gonna be our divider. Our field deck boards are running perpendicular. Our divider is parallel with our joist. So we did our pressure blocking 16 on centers to catch our divider, which is parallel with our joist. Came in and put this blocking to catch our field boards that are gonna come in. That board's in there. We're gonna have a 3 16 uh, gap. And the reason we're doing this and taking our time, any dirt, water, moisture, if this, if we just put a flat block in here, even if you use joist tape, that's gonna sit in there and prematurely rot out the end of your boards. Dirt, debris, all that would sit in there and rot if we had um, flat blocking. Why it's always best to pull any blocking back like this joist pull it back to so the end of your board and any water that gets in here can just drop and you know get through or debris that's a mistake I made on the first couple decks I built I really didn't take that into consideration got the LVLs for our pergola, some 11 and 7 eighths here. The trick of the day is to get these up there, over there. Right now what we're doing is establishing our beam height. All you need, line level. You can set your line to arbitrary height and then pull across, pull through, you can get your level line. And I usually do like something like this where we're going above. I'll set my level line and arbitrary height that's comfortable at eye level, that way, when you set your initial point, then all you need to do is pull and get your measurement from where your bottom of your beam or whatever you're laying out to your level line. So if it's 24 inches, you get your line level, go to the end, pull up the same 24 inches. It takes out any deviation in your uh, flooring substrate. You, you know, it's basically just a control line. Put it on the end of a nail, make a bite, pull your fingers up, and grab the line that's called the lark's head that's just a good it's almost like a trucker's hitch or kind of similar to a clove hitch he's done a half a dozen times i still can't pick it up so you might have to rewatch that <laughs> how far did you drive these nails in Okay. Yeah. Those are awesome screws. Or legs. The tip just barely tucks That's outside. actually how you want them. Just tip, tuck they down. claim you want a quarter inch to a half inch protruding through. No, like nobody does that, but if you read the specs, that's what it says. It sounds like sirens going off downstairs in the I base bet. with that old. That's Sound when you like know what? your framing's tight. Exactly.
What's up guys, so we got the LVL up here. Drew pre-drilled, we're using these Simpson strong tie uh, brackets. We're using Simpson, it's like their decorative, it's kind of like a GRK or a similar to a Spax structural uh, screws, lags. Requires four of them. So if you look under here, we're bearing two inches on the post and then these brackets are inch and a half so they stuck out inch and a half these are more decorative but they also they also are structural so they'll do what their intended purpose is here that's a six by six it's true to its size it's pretty close to six by six and then the screws we're using are five and a half inches long so the detail looks pretty good. We like to pre-drill to remove the material so the uh, fastener can do its job without splitting the wood. Especially when you're going into LVLs, they're pretty hard material. So these are nice and flush under here. We use a Bessie clamp. We use PL construction adhesive like you've seen in the time lapse. Two foot on center. These are Simpson strong tie lags as well. Uh, every two feet on center. I think we came up three inches. Yeah, three inches from the edge. Three inches from the edge. Oh, Sorry right, guys. Drew's gonna drive some three and a half inch galvanized uh, 131s. Anytime you're using these Milwaukee uh, framing nailers, especially the plastic collated clips, these nails, make sure you got sunglasses, safety glasses, something on. That plastic will embed into your eye. It hurts. When, it, when it bounces off your forehead, it sure don't feel good. So just be as safe as you can. Here's our holes, Drew. Oh, yeah. It's what you're looking for. Yep. Trying to get in the center. Yeah. Drew's shooting these at a slight angle because this Milwaukee framing nailer does have enough oomph to it, even at three and a half. The tips will poke out a little bit. Drew, would you run off that flat roof over there and jump into the pool? Yes, sir, I would. So Drew's putting down some uh, foil faced flashing tape we're gonna I guess you would say flash the top of this mm -hmm. and then it's gonna be foil face so it's like exterior just another extra step that a lot of people don't see homeowner will probably likely never see and keeps this nice and sealed <laughs> 